Hello and welcome back to the Grunt Perspective. In this video, I'm going to be covering my plate carrier setup. <clears throat> so, to talk about it a little bit, um, the decision to wear or to not wear plates is becoming a topic of discussion more and more. But if you're in the position like I am, uh, you don't get to make that decision. So, if you are gonna have to wear plates, then I just wanted to show uh, the way that I've found to do it, to make it a, a little bit more bearable. Um, I should note that I've worn this exact same setup as far as like the pouches and the cummerbund, uh, the front and the back goes on the generation two and the generation three issued Marine Corps plate carrier. And it's worked the exact same, but I'm now I'm now able to use uh, unissued plate carriers. Um, so I'm trying a couple different things out, but um, just, for the, just for the guys that I know that are watching this that don't have the option to use this plate carrier, uh, don't click away. Um, I've done the same thing with the Gen 2 and the Gen 3, uh, and it's worked well for me. Um, so the plate carrier itself, is a LBT SRT plate carrier, um, which is just like a spinoff of the 6094 plate carrier, which they uh, used and issued in mass numbers to uh, to military units. Been a very successful plate carrier, but it just has more more uh, more Velcro on the front. Um, I got this plate carrier for a pretty good deal from a from a friend of mine, um, so that's why. I don't think I would have bought this brand new from LBT because they're like $600. Uh, but you know, I came across it, so I wanted to try it out. Um, so we'll start on the front on the front plate bag. We'll do the cummerbunds and then the rear plate bag and the shoulder straps. So the front, I have um, a Shaw Concepts Arc V2 placard. Um, and inside of that placard, I have their RAM elastic insert. Um, this is the only elastic insert that I like. Uh, and it's because it has Tigris um, on the inside to like hold that placard open a little bit or to hold that elastic open a little bit. Um, and then on the front of the placard, I have a Blue Force Gear 10 speed uh, triple magazine shingle. Um, I don't normally keep magazines in there or anything in there. I just put some magazines inside here to show the reason why I keep that on the front is just so I have the ability to scale up uh, and carry more ammunition. If I'm wearing a plate carrier, the chances are either I'm expecting contact, I'm going out, I'm looking for a fight. Uh, so the likelihood that you're gonna wanna carry more ammo is uh, quite likely. So having a little bit of scalability on the front is great. Uh, and it's not just for magazines. These things are awesome to like shove random items in, chem lights. Uh, sometimes I carry a flashlight uh, inside this here, um, which I otherwise would, would have nowhere to put this. So I love that a lot. Uh, back to the placard though. Um, the elastic ram insert has Tigris on the sides of it, which holds the uh, holds the shape of the placard open, which is which is the biggest problem about the elastic, is that the elastic forms an oval, right? Forms an oval shape, and this shape is not an oval. This is more of a rectangle, right? So the corners get stuck, but because of this Tigris lips on either side it allows it to stay open in enough to where I can re-index it with one hand without looking at it, but the elastic gives it their retention to where this magazine isn't gonna come out unless I want it to, right? Obviously, if you're like a paratrooper or something like that, then you can fashion bungee retention over the top so like, you know, you meet that criteria, but I don't need to do that. So it works for me. I have the placard attached to an axle advanced uh, placard adapter um, and it 
goes right on there just fine. This, uh, this, these ones specifically are for, uh, are, are for Marine Corps plate, plate carriers. They have a bunch of different ones, but the ones for the Marine Corps plate carriers will work for the LBT 6094 or the SRT plate carrier. Um, and then inside of one of the slots, I keep a Sharpie, uh, probably use this more than anything, but, um, it's a good thing to have. On the bottom of the plate carrier, or on the bottom of the placard, I have a tourniquet. Uh, this this tourniquet, um, normally I would advise against keeping tourniquets inside of the pouches like that, that are like open, because it, so it opens them up to the elements. But uh, I keep four tourniquets, two of which are fast access, um, like this one and the other two are folded. In my belt video, I kind of talked about the difference between the two, but in short, if you keep your tourniquets folded, um, you're able to apply them with, with, with one hand, right? Say you don't have your other hand. Um, having your tourniquet, or excuse me, if you keep your tourniquet looped, you'll be able to ap ap apply it with one hand. If you have your tourniquet folded, it's gonna be really difficult to run that running end of the tourniquet through the buckle. So I keep a mix. Um, so that's the tourniquet that just goes on the bottom of my plate carrier uh, up front so I can access it with either hand in the event that I don't have one of the hands. Um, so, that, so that covers my spiel on that. Um, under it, uh, I have a dangler. Uh, this dangler is the Onward Research Simp Pouch. Uh, I really like this dangler, and I don't normally like danglers. Um, I kind of have a short torso, and like I'm a tall guy, but I kind of have a short torso and long legs. So danglers usually don't work very well for me because they're too big, they're hitting my legs, especially if, if like I'm walking up like a really steep hill or something like that, and then it's really getting in the way, it's impeding the movement of my legs, which is, Horrible, I hate that feeling, right? But this one works for me um, because it's small and it allows me to carry like just the essential stuff that I would like otherwise carry like like in the chest rig video, like I, like I got a bunch of pockets and stuff inside that, but like I don't have that on a plate carrier, right? Uh, so this allows me to carry that, that stuff, some of that stuff, the, like some of the essentials, right? So inside of here, I have a Garmin GPS, uh, and this is a stand-in for a military GPS. The problems with Garmin's is they can be like tracked, targeted, spoofed, um, but I, I have this as a stand-in in case I don't get a dagger or like an encrypted G, uh, GPS. This does all the same functions that I would need a dagger to do or that a dagger does do, but um, you know, sometimes we don't use those for whatever reason, we don't, we don't take them with us. So that's my spiel on, on that. The wrist strap is a micro bat uh, wrist strap. It's just a little bit longer than the one that um, comes with uh, the 601. And I'm, yeah, it, the one with the 601 was just way too short for me. I, I was gonna lose this thing if I, if I, if I use that. So that's, that's, that's the Garmin. Um, candy paint, self-explanatory. Um, you need to conceal yourself, especially if you're, you know, an infantryman and not uh, like a prepared citizen. Headlamp, uh, I, I really like this headlamp. It's a Princeton Tech because it has a physical red lens filter on the front of it. Some, some headlamps you have to like cycle through like white light to get to the red lens light. This one, I keep that up all the time and I know that if I click that red lens is coming on, right? Uh, contrary to what a lot of people think, you know, you can still see red light at a great distance. Um, it's not like red light you just can't see at, at night. I don't, I don't know why people think that, but they do. Um, so you still need to be careful with it, but the red lens uh, does help. The, the, the red lens filter does help. Um, so that's my headlamp. Roll of tape. 
uh, can be useful for a thousand, a thousand different things. Um, so roll tape. And then inside here, I keep a two foot by two foot air, air, air panel. This one's made by Velocity Systems and uh, keep it inside of the little retention there um, so it doesn't fall out. Um, so the SIM pouch is great. It's just small enough. Uh, it's just big enough. And uh, I really like it. O on the front, it's got loops to put like tourniquet or, well, it does have loops for tourniquets, but on the front of it, it it's got loops for like chem lights or something like that. Um, I've had it for a little bit now and I've really been enjoying it. So I would recommend it. Um, so that covers what I keep inside the scent pouch. Uh, and that pretty much covers the front of the plate carrier with the addition. I, I would have my... Uh, my identification placard on the front here. And then there's a large admin pocket that you can put stuff in. Um, everyone says like, oh, you can put your maps inside there, but like maps are big. Maps are not small things. So usually my map goes inside my like cargo pocket when I'm wearing a plate carrier. Um, but you could look at my uh, first line equipment video and I'll explain all the stuff that I carry inside my pockets. Um, this front of space is commonly in the fleet. You see guys with humongous admin pouches on the front and they're usually full of shit, just dumb shit that you don't need to have on the front of your body armor. Like, I don't know, dip, um, red lens, like all the stuff that I've got here, but in a position to where it makes it difficult to pull your magazines out, right? Like, why would you why would you want anything in the way of pulling your magazines out, right? So if you can help it, try to keep nothing on the front, right? Some people can't help it. Some people have different jobs and they have to use this space, right? But if you're gonna use like an admin pouch, I would recommend like the Shaw Concepts admin pouch, the arc where it, it kind of has a slant and it allows you to kind of ramp those magazines out. But I would try to keep nothing on the front. Um, so that covers admin pouches. Um, we'll do this side first. So this is my, my, uh, my strong side. First thing that I will, we'll cover the cummerbund. The cummerbund is a uh, Shaw Concepts Arc V2 cummerbund, which this plate carrier has pretty much got the Shaw, the, uh, Shaw Concepts treatment. Um, I, re I, I really like a lot of their stuff. And on the inside, I have the Shaw Concepts uh, side buckets, the, the, plate, uh, the plate side buckets, which have this nice um, closed cell foam for padding. I don't normally run side plates. I have before, not with these pouches specifically, but if you need to run side plates, these things um, open up and you can put side plates in there and then you have to put a little cap on the top of them. Um, but I don't usually do that. So, and then on it, on the outside of it, I keep uh, a double rifle mag pouch. This is a tactical tailor double rifle mag pouch where I normally don't keep two magazines in. I usually keep one, but I put this, this one in to again show like the scalability which is very important, uh, but I normally keep one, and this is the first magazine that gets filled and goes into my rifle. And then it leaves this pouch empty for either two more magazines or a smoke grenade or something like you could, you could probably cram a dagger inside here. Um, but I guess my main thought process was uh, for smoke grenades. I have the ability to carry two on my belt and one more on my plate carrier, which is honestly probably more than I'll ever need to carry, but the capabilities there nonetheless. So put that back in. And then there's two loops for shotgun shells on the bottom of uh, the pouch there. If you need to carry shotgun shells, then uh, that's there for you. Uh, first thing forward on the first molly on the cummerbund, I have a T3 gear tourniquet pouch and I have one of these on each side. 
Uh, I like these because they're fully enclosed. They protect, they protect the tourniquet. And these are the tourniquets that I use, that I, that I would use for other people. Uh, I keep these ones folded because they're easy to just like rip it out and start putting it on. And I keep them fully protected from UV, dirt, mud, sticks, uh, to make sure that there's nothing in my way or impeding my movement when I'm trying to like, you know, stop someone's, stop someone's bleeding. Um, okay. And then the back, I keep the rest of it slick. One, because like anything past here, I can't really reach. And two, because my ruck, my shoulder straps would interfere with anything that's coming through here. Really, I could fit something else on this and it wouldn't get in the way that bad, um, but I keep it slick. And then on the inside, I keep uh, one, one rifle magazine inside of a Shaw Concepts uh, elastic insert, which I don't normally like elastic inserts, but these ones seem to work okay. Um, so that covers my strong side. First spear tubes on the front, because being able to quickly don and doff my plate carrier is important to me. Now, onto my uh, weak side. Uh, again, I have a T3 gear tourniquet pouch with another tourniquet, and then I have a London Bridge Trading uh, radio pouch. Now, um, I see a lot of guys that run their radios on the inside of their cummerbunds. And I, it, personally, I don't think it's a good I, I, I idea for, for military guys specifically, being uh, the frequency at which you're gonna need to pull that radio out of the pouch, look at it. Um, even if you have like an antenna relocator and, a, and like a handset like I do, or like a push to talk like I do with like Peltors, um, they're finicky. The military radios are old and they're, they don't work very well sometimes. And you have to pull that thing out of the pouch all the time to turn it on, turn it off. Well, I mean, I guess you could turn it on or off with it in the pouch, but having it inside, inside your cummerbund and like undoing your cummerbund, messing around with that like kangaroo pouch which is often like really hard to use because they have no structure to them. It's just, it's literally just meant to hold the radio and like do nothing else. It's just not something that I wanted to deal with. Some people do. That's my opinion on it. Um, so you can do whatever you want with it, obviously, but that's, that's, that's my consideration for it. On the inside of this cummerbund, I have the same thing. Mirrored, I have the uh, pads with the one rifle magazine. And that's normally my standard loadout of magazines on my plate carrier is uh, six. Three on the front, one in each cummerbund, and then one inside of my, uh, my uh, mag pouch that's over here that gets uh, filled and put in my rifle. Um, I have six mags, but I only have three on the front. Keeping three on the front is pretty essential to infantrymen, grunts, uh, to be able to go prone, right? You can go prone with six mags on, on, on the front. There's no reason why you can't. And if you need to carry a lot of rifle magazines, like maybe you're an automatic rifleman um, and you have like an M27 instead of a saw, then you're probably not gonna be able to get around it. You're probably gonna have to have six mags on, on the front because you need more on the sides of, of your plate carrier. But if you can manage to do so, you should try to only have three on the front so you can get lower to the ground. Um, a, lot, a lot of combat vets that, that, that I've talked to will tell you like, man, I, I wish I could have got just one inch lower to the ground, right? So consider that uh, before you start stacking a bunch of stuff on the front of your plate carrier. Like guys that have like, they'll have a placard and then they'll have like, a massive like insert like the drippy company admin pouch on the front like you know just huge or like the like 
like the micro chest rig like placards that get expanded and expanded and expanded and, and then they turn into this massive thing on the front of your play carrier. Right? Getting low to the ground is essential. So consider that. Again, on the rest of the cummerbund, I've got it completely slick, minus my antenna relocator cable uh, that goes to the back of my play carrier. Uh, the shoulder straps are Velocity Systems uh, padded shoulder straps. Uh, they don't have very much padding at all. Uh, and there's a reason for that is because I often have to wear this with a rucksack and having massive plate carrier shoulder pads with a rucksack doesn't work. You have to have some really slim ones and a lot of guys that I know have no padding at all on their plate carriers, just slick straps. Um, but I wanted to have a little bit of padding, so I have these ones, it's a little bit of padding, it's like a quarter inch and it doubles as uh, some, some routing for hoses or wires if you need to do that. So that covers the padding. Moving to the back. Now, the back of my plate carrier, I try to keep relatively slick. Uh, a lot of people have like plate carrier back panels or like assaulter back panels that they have like pouches and they got like flashbangs and stuff like that across there. And most people that have those things don't need them, right? Um, if it, if I could have exactly what I wanted, I would have absolutely nothing on the back of my plate carrier because of, again, how often I have to wear this with a rucksack. Um, if that's not a consideration for you, then that's not a consideration for you, but that's a major consideration for me and like all grunts and, and infantrymen. Uh, so this is, uh, it lays flat when I'm not using it. This is like a no name tactical, brand um, hydration carrier. So I don't even know where I, where I got this from, but you can look at like the elements of, of this and you can choose something that looks like this, right? This is, all it is, is it carries uh, a Camelback ladder. There's, no, there's not a lot of extra room on the inside uh, for like, um, I don't know, maybe you could carry bolt cutters or something like that if, you're, uh, if you need to do that, that kind of thing. Uh, but I don't usually need to do that. In case I need to, I have a Night Eyes S binder on the top so I could zip it up and I could clip it closed to keep it from coming unzipped like that. Um, but I use it to control that Camelback hose a little bit. The Camelback is a three liter Camelback. Um, I see a lot of people, not really in like the infantry, but on like Instagram and stuff that have like a 50 ounce hydration bladder and it's like this big and it's like right here on their plate carrier, right? Which is fine for most, app, for most applications, but if you're a grunt, you need to have as much water as you can carry when you're not with your pack, right? Because as, as is the theme, anything can happen. So having three liters of water is like the minimum, right? It's in a Camelback, which I don't like. And I haven't figured out a way to get around that short of putting Nalgene's on my kit, which I don't want to do because it's heavy and it's going to interfere with, with, with my belt and my ruck. So I don't really have space to put like Nalgene bottles on my kit or on my belt or like, so I'm working on that. All right, to, to, to say the least. Right now, the solution for me is a Camelback ladder, three little, a three liter Camelback ladder. Um, so that covers that. And then in here, I have a accessory pouch that has no form of like organization in it, um, but it, it just allows me to throw some stuff in there that I might need, right? If I'm going, on a patrol or away from my PB in only my plate carrier and my belt, which I don't know why I would ever be uh, be doing that. Uh, there's almost always I'm going to have a, a salt pack at a minimum or a rucksack. Um, I would use this to store survival items like 
don't know, uh, space blankets, uh, fire starters, um, you know, just extra stuff like water purification, stuff like that. What I, what I do is I have a Spiritus uh, uh, fanny sack that has all that stuff in it. And I just, if I'm ever like, as I said, without a pack, which is very seldom, it, I just throw that inside there and then I go. I got all the stuff that I need uh, if, you know, something goes south. Uh, I have a TCI mast antenna re uh, relocator, which to be honest, I don't use very much. Um, usually, as I kind of uh, alluded to when I was talking about the, the radio pouch, usually it's kind of a pain. Uh, because of how frequently you got to take this thing out of the pouch. I do have a quick disconnect on the end of this cable. So sometimes I do use it, but sometimes it'll interfere with a, with a pack or a ruck. So I usually don't. Lastly, the last thing is a, is a military pot flare pouch. Um, inside here is obviously made for a, for a pot flare, which can be crucial to your signal plan um, lost marine plan or something like that. Uh, it's usually empty, but it's on there to have a solution to carry those things because they are humongous and they are not very good to carry at all. But sometimes, you know, there's no way to get around it. Again, that's there if I'm, if I'm whatever, for whatever reason, without a pack, which is seldomly. Okay. Another solution that I came up with to carry these pop flares is this thing. This is a, I believe this is a J Tactical Solutions tuckable Molly panel, which I cut and put stick on Velcro and a pop flare pouch with a Tactical Tailor long malice clip. Um, and this would go under my placard. And then that's a way to horizontally carry a pop flare. So if like it's crucial that you are able to access your pop flare yourself. This could be something that you could make like I did, or I'm pretty sure that they like sell products that are made for this kind of thing, but I didn't, I didn't want to buy one. So I just made one. Um, but I believe that covers everything on the plate carrier. Uh, you guys, might have some questions like there's a lot of stuff that's missing like admin um maps watches like other things like that but if you watch my first line gear video you'll see that all all that stuff pretty much lives inside my pockets um in addition to the belt right as i said in the belt video i only wear my plate carrier with my belt um, uh, I don't wear my belt without my plate carrier. So it's like one kit. It's they're, they're never apart from each other. Um, other than like, if I'm just taking my plate carrier off for a couple minutes. So, uh, thanks for watching. Feel free to drop a comment down below if you have questions or suggestions and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.